Hello and welcome back to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Dumbest Moments of the Week. Well, well, we got some really juicy goss to get into about Alex today. Damn, she really jumped the shark this week, if you ask me. You see, we've got a few really good ones today, like a top Democrat and Speaker of the House calling AOC out for relying too much on Twitter. For shame. And that's something which I myself have commented on before multiple times. I always talk about how I hate Twitter, and I always talk about how annoying AOC is on there. For some reason, millennials like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, they really think Twitter means something. And maybe, sure, it can, but it's mostly just not nonsense that most people don't pay attention to. But yeah, sure, Twitter can be used as an effective tool in addition to other public relations ventures, but AOC, she's clearly obsessed with it. She's on Twitter every day and posting on there every hour, like some kind of maniac. Like she's a scorned lover trying to reach her ex. Yeah, so needless to say, I really think Cortez is kind of addicted to it. I guess she probably needs all that positive reinforcement she gets on there. Alex clearly likes the ass pats, and it doesn't matter to her that she really doesn't deserve them. But that's only the beginning of the topics for today. Later, Later, we'll get to AOC calling out a Navy SEAL. And also, there's another funny parody of her I found I want you guys to check out too, so we can all have a laugh. And those are only the side dishes I'm serving up to you now. What's really going to be great today is the main course, the steak, the manja. And well, the main course today is an appearance AOC made where she started speaking in a black southern accent, a voice which she never used before, ever. Yeah, she started talking black in front of a bunch of black people in some sort of crazy, racist, and offensive pandering attempt. We're going to get to all that today and more. But first, let's take a minute to check out our new sponsor, the mobile video game Backgammon Live. Fun fact before we get started on it though. The game Backgammon is apparently very popular among men who are popular with women. Here's a little known fact for you guys. Hugh Hefner, the founder of Playboy magazine, he was so fond of the game Backgammon that he even held small tournaments at his home. There were real backgammon competitions at the Playboy Mansion, believe it or not. But now let's get into this new and exciting app. Backgammon Live is a lot of fun and a very interesting experience that you can get on your mobile phone. It's one of the biggest backgammon apps there is. It's got over 10 million users, so if you're interested at all, I recommend you try it today. If you do, Backgammon Live can be played with users all across the world, and you can enjoy this ride with lots of worldwide themes in the app. Yes, there's special board variants with lots of new upgrades that are happening each and every day, and also, you can compete to win prizes every day too. Back Backgammon Live also has many other mini games like Blackjack, High and Low, Roulette, and even some digital slot machines that you can try your luck at. So don't wait, download the game via the links in the description right below this video. And if you do, the first 10 users that reach level 25 will get 100,000 coins in-game currency free. With that said, Backgammon Live is definitely something you should try today. Check out the links below and thanks for your time. Now. Back to the show. Great, now that that's out of the way, let's get back to AOC's dumbest moments of the week. Let's go ahead and start this off with the big one. You probably heard about this already, all about how AOC had this fake black accent in a speech she gave around a week ago. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and check it out for ourselves again now and see what's up. This is what organizing looks like. This is what building power looks like. This is what changing the country looks like. It's when we choose to show up and occupy the room and talk about the things that matter most, talking about our future. You know, I, Reverend, you bring up a, a funny anecdote and I'm proud to be a bartender. Nothing wrong with being a bartender, sure, but I'm willing to bet you were a pretty shitty bartender even then. And just listen to that cringy southern voice she's putting on. That's called pandering, lady, and it's something Hillary Rodham Clinton used to do to black people, too. Hillary would also put on this fake voice and pretend to be down with their causes and stuff. And also, remember that time Hillary tried to sound cool for using hot sauce? Yeah, stuff like that is stupid to the maximum, and it really achieves the opposite of what these politicians are going for. When Hillary or AOC are doing it, they're clearly trying to appeal to the crowd and seem down to earth, but really, this faking it and pandering shows that these people do see themselves as above or better than everyone else, at least who they're talking to in the room. If you were really a down to earth person, you wouldn't have to try and sound down to earth, basically. And for Hillary Clinton's case, she could easily be seen as a rich politician, elite, who looks down on people from her ivory tower. AOC, on the other hand, she just thinks she's some kind of high class elitist above everyone else, when really, she's not. That's all in her head. Alex is 
is just a bartender, as she just said, and the only reason she's a politician now is because a Democratic think tank funded her and made her into one. She's just a puppet for them, but clearly, she's starting to think she's more than that. There's nothing wrong with working retail, folding clothes for other people to buy. There is nothing wrong with preparing the food that your neighbors will eat. There is nothing wrong with driving the buses that take your family to work. There is nothing wrong with being a working person in the United States of America. And if you didn't notice, there's some pretty juicy tweets superimposed on the bottom of this version of the video. Mostly it's prominent black and brown men on Twitter saying how racist and offensive this AOC video is. And I think it's particularly hypocritical coming from someone like Alex Cortez. She's the one calling everyone else racist all the time and saying conservatives are white supremacists even. And then she goes and acts like this around black people? What a goddamn joke. And I hate to beat a dead horse again here. Here, but this is proof that the Democrats are the real racists. I, in fact, am encouraged when people remind the country of my past, not because of anything about my story, but because it communicates that if I could work in a restaurant and become a member of the United States Congress, so can you. So can you. If you think about it, Alex is actually belittling the job of a congressperson here. If a bartender can become one, then anyone can. And that sounds like a bad sign to me. It's also a pretty dishonest portrayal of AOC's rise to power. She says it as if she did this all herself and anyone else could do that too. But really, Alex was cast as a candidate by a radical liberal group called the Justice Democrats. Then they used their power, ideas, and influence to put Alex into power. So let's not pretend AOC just decided to run one day on her own and then mounted a solo campaign coming all from herself. That's not even close to what happened. And, as our next moment will show, it appears the old guard of Democrats are none too pleased about AOC and the way she operates either. This Fox News article has more details. It's called, Pelosi appears to mock Ocasio-Cortez over reliance on Twitter for support. This should be good. Let's go ahead and check it out. Pelosi was asked during a USA Today interview published on Monday about her struggles of running a house while freshman Democrats, such as Ocasio-Cortez, are pushing the party further to the left and fighting over more symbolic gestures rather than actually implementing democratic policies. While there are people who have a large number of Twitter followers, what's important is we have a large number of votes on the floor of the House, Pelosi said. Well put, Nancy. And don't get me wrong here, either. Me and Nancy Pelosi disagree on many things. But when she's right, she's right. And I have no problem admitting that. Really reminds me of the last time we talked about her, when Pelosi stood up to those brainwashed kids who were trying to force her to sign the Green New Deal or some shit. But Speaker of the House Pelosi don't play like that, as we're seeing again today in this article. And also, like what I mentioned before about her, Pelosi is admittedly a long-term seasoned Democratic politician. While AOC has won merely one election and has been in office for a couple months, and she could also prove to just be a fluke, well, Pelosi on the other hand is not. She has won dozens of elections and that's why she's been serving in public office for decades. To put it briefly, Pelosi knows how to get things done, but Alex Cortez? Well, she don't know shit. Next, we gotta move on to this recent drama surrounding one of AOC's buddies, Ilhan Omar. As I briefly mentioned in yesterday's video, Omar is getting heat because she tried to downplay 9-11. You know, that horrible Muslim-led terrorist attack that killed thousands of innocent Americans. Yeah, Omar tried to reduce that to just something that some people did. I guess murdering innocent Americans is no big deal to Omar. And funny enough, to make matters worse here, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez decided to jump in and defend her fellow SJW and Brown friend. Here's a video I found where Alex struggles to defend Omar while talking to a reporter. Printing on the front page to circulate all around New York City an image that is incredibly upsetting and triggering for New Yorkers that were actually there and were actually in the radius that woke up one morning or were in their schools and didn't know if they were going to see their parents at the end of the day. Yeah, there you go. Use the children who were scared on 9-11 to push your own agenda. Classic exploitation of the youth by a Democrat. Congratulations, Alex. And also, if that picture that the New York Post used to call out Ilhan Omar, which was a pic of the World Trade Center towers on fire after the attack, well, if that really triggers people in New York City so much, then wouldn't Omar's comments belittling that attack be much worse? Because I think it would. And I also think AOC is a silly looking woman with giant teeth and a baby voice. We are getting to the level where, the, where this is an incitement of violence against progressive women of color. And if they can't figure out how to get it back to policy, we need to call it out for what it is. Because this is not normal, and this is not a normal level of pro political debate or rhetoric. As as wild as it can get sometimes 
this is something beyond what is normal. If you say so, crazy, I think you're just trying to make yourself out to be a victim again, because that's your go-to. It's almost like she didn't really know what to say here, so she just fell back on her old and tired line of, I'm a victim and conservatives are violent monsters. I mean, where the hell is this incitement of violent shit coming from? I think she's just making shit up because I've never heard anyone incite any violence against them. I have heard Muslims say, Allahu Akbar and death to America though, but I've certainly never heard anyone say violence should be had against AOC or Ilhan Omar. I guess these are just more lies and exaggerations. Coming from a 29-year-old bartender who wants to be a victim so bad, she just makes shit up. Next, AOC continues to try and defend Omar by going after a retired Navy SEAL. For those who don't know, Navy SEALs are the primary special operations force for the US Navy. These guys are legit, and they're basically the most badass, all-terrain soldiers who are used in some of America's most high-profile military operations. And well, AOC decided it would be a good idea to challenge one of them, saying, hey, why don't you do something about the terrorists? And well, ironically enough, this Navy SEAL she was talking about had in fact dealt with terrorism before, during his career. And even, he lost one of his eyes while doing so. Meet Dan Crenshaw, a retired Navy SEAL turned politician. He lost his eye in an anti-terrorist operation, which had an explosion. And now look what he's got to come home to. People like AOC saying he should have done something already, when really, he already did. Well done, Alex. You've proven to us you're a complete ditz. Lastly, let's finally get to that parody I told you about earlier. AOC is pretty rife for material when it comes to comedians looking for topical and political jokes, that's for sure. But unfortunately, the liberal-run mainstream media would never dare to make fun of a Democratic darling like her. That's why you'll never see these kinds of impersonations done on a show like Saturday Night Live or The Daily Show. You know, places that are supposed to do this kind of comedy. Fortunately, though, it's easier than ever for people to film and share videos. That's why I was able to find this interesting video on Twitter from a user called Randy Savage. This girl is hilarious and she did a little parody of AOC's video where she was eating and building furniture last week, something we covered. Here, take a look at the goof video. Okay, y'all. Listen to me. I might be under investigation for, you know, fraud and stuff, FEC stuff, but that's not even the point. Like, at least I don't do what Border Patrol do, you know, like, for real. Wow, I love the eating, the voice, the makeup, everything. It's screaming AOC right here. Also, this really reminds me of that other parody which we showed on this show a few weeks back. In that one, another girl on Twitter was making another joke version of one of AOC's live streams. I mean, those streams are so funny already, the jokes really write themselves. All these girls really need to do is get the look and the voice down and boom, we've got comedy gold like this. Stay out there. And they're actually like checking how brown kids are. And if they're brown enough, I swear to God, they will check. And if they're brown enough, they inject them with needles at the border. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong why I've been this furniture. <laughs> Hilarious. And well done, Randy. Definitely going to follow this girl and see what other funny stuff she comes up with. I also put a link to this video in her Twitter below in the description if you guys want to do the same. In the end, we've had another very embarrassing week for AOC. And so far, this year is looking like a giant cringe fest for her. I think it's her combination of being dumb and confident that really makes her a complete lol cow. And well, I'm happy to be the one that's going to be here week after week, milking that tea so we can all enjoy this comedy gold. What do you guys think? Was AOC using that fake black accent offensive? Should she be defending Omar and her cringy 9-11 comments? And what do you think about AOC telling a Navy SEAL who lost his eye fighting terror that he needs to do something about terrorism? Comment your thoughts on everything below and thanks for watching, no bullshit. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you all next time.